Welcome back to Blender November Visual Scripting with Serpents and Darkfall. We're continuing on with the Shader Library series. In the previous video, we created a glass BSDF node and set up a structure so that you can create more than one. I'm going to teach you a little bit more about functions in this video, and this is actually where functions really shine. So we're going to take all these nodes and duplicate them more than one time, and we're actually going to be making four of these glass BSDF nodes. So rather than cluttering up our node tree, we can throw all of these into a function and we're going to just use a couple of nodes. So let's go ahead and get started. You can actually highlight all of these nodes. We're going to hit the end key on our end panel. And let's make a new graph. So we're going to call this one glass BSDF and we'll add in a node at the end. And I want to copy all these nodes. Control C, Control V. And you just have to hit the period key on your numpad, or you can go to View and Frame Selected to find them when they paste. And I'm going to hit Control Spacebar to go to Maximum View. And go to Shift A in your Add menu, and under Functions, there's a Function node. I like to start my function outs with fn. You can do that if you'd like. And then I'm just going to call this one class BSDF node. Now what's nice about a function is you can actually connect in parameters so that when you call and run the function, all you have to do is change a couple of inputs. And the function will run and it can set the attributes for you with just the run function node and a couple of input nodes as well. So in this case, we're accessing the any data type on the blend datas, and we're also going to be setting the location. So you can just click on the parameter, drag out and connect, and the location is now set, and it tells you what it's expecting for data. Drag out and connect as well for our color, and we'll drag out and connect as well for our index of refraction. Now these are technically just data, so we need to tell ourselves what we're going to be setting here. But it's pretty much as simple as that. Now we do want to return the node blend data as well because we're going to be setting some variables so that we can link up these nodes later after they've been created. So in order to do that, a function also has a function return. You do shift A and in the functions there's a function return node. And you can connect in the last execute for the diamond, and then connect in the node to return the node blend data type. I just like to name mine so I know what I'm returning. And that's pretty much it for our function. So we don't necessarily need the float and the color anymore because they're going to be used at the front of the node as inputs. We can actually just control C and copy them. Let's go back to our shader library graph and do a shift A and do a run function. Now that we've got more than one function, we can select between the two. And as we selected it, you'll notice at the bottom here, we have our own inputs. And we also have another section here that you can click in and select your return. So rather than connecting all this in, I'm not going to delete it because we'll reference it later. But now I've got a nice looking snazzy function. So I'm going to grab these nodes and shift them down. I'm going to paste in the nodes from the other graph. We'll hit period on our numcat, period on our numpad, and bring them over here. We set this to negative 600 on the location and 400 for the Y. Now all we have to do is duplicate this node setup. And we would create our other class BSDF nodes. We have four in the graph. We'll just come back and reference that graph. One, two, three, and four. So all we have to do now is set their colors. So this one's going to be green.
this one blue, and white is just turning them all up to one. Okay. He's got the blue set to 1.545, so we can go ahead and change that if we want. And we do need to set the locations on all these. So we started out at negative 600 and 400. We can keep the same Y location for the first three, or the same X location, and then we just change the Y location. So 400, 200, and zero. And then this one's gonna need to be somewhere around negative 200, and we can leave it as zero as well. So when we compile now, We've created all of our four nodes very simply and easily, and it's a nice clean graph. Easy to read, and you can come and reference your function and change individual items, and it will update all of them. So you don't have to go through and recopy four different sets of node structures. So that sets up the glass BSDFs, but how do you know which one you're going to be referencing to link them up? Well, this is where variables come into play, and on your end panel, you can create variables. And all I've done, we'll go ahead and start from scratch. You just click on the plus icon, and it sets the data type to a default of string. And we want to change that to be blend data so that we have access to these teal returns in the function. We'll just name these all out like we do in the Darkfall series. So glass one, we'll create another, set it to blend data. so on and so forth. Shift these over just slightly. Then we're going to set these variables. So click on the first one, make a setter, and you can actually bring it in between the two, and then connect in the glass BSDF node. We'll make use of these later in a coming video, but go ahead and at least get them set up. There you have it. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll create the two add shaders and the mix shader, and then we will connect in all the links. We'll catch you on the next one.